All right, so let's continue on and actually get this into an actual uh, texture format. Okay, so uh, I'm going to jump into the grass texture sheet here. And you can see I went and just add some added some boxes around these guys by hitting uh, Shift O. You just select all the nodes and hit Shift O and it puts a nice little box, keeps it organized. Um, okay, so the last thing that we really need to do to get this into a texture is to drop down a comp or a cop network. So we want a cop2 network up here. All right, so uh, I'm actually just going to put this right at the bottom because it's kind of the last step in this particular node, all right, in the texture sheet node. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, render uh, texture, or at least that's what I'm going to name that. Now the COP2 networks allows us to put in COP uh, nodes. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with Houdini too much, there is the um, image network. And this is where we can go and put down compositing networks and start to edit images. Well, we can also do that in the OBJ or SOP context, all right? And we do that by dropping down a COP2 network node. Because what we can do now is we can double click this and we jump inside. And this gives us access to all of those COP network nodes. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a SOP import node. And this allows us to retrieve objects from a SOP network. And that's exactly what we have right here. This is a SOP network. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to get the out raycast result there. So I'm going to go and get out raycast. And you can see down here that we're getting our grass blades in a texture format. It would be really cool if I could look at it up here. And so to do that, uh, we hit this little plus button up here and we want to create a new pane. And this pane is going to be a composite view pane. And this allows us to view our texture that we're working with. Okay. So a couple things we want to do on the SOP import node itself. The first thing we want to do is say set resolution from SOP. All right. And you can see it's picking up that 1024 by 1024. And remember that's being set by the volumes themselves right here. Okay. So if I were to change this by to 2048 and then go and jump inside, say set resolution, you can see now we're at 2048. Cool. Uh, but remember, we have to do that for all of these, right? Because this, this guy is still 1028 for some odd reason. Uh, what I want to do is actually copy this parameter here. So let's copy this and just paste it into these guys. That way, whenever we go and update the main node, this color node, these other guys go with it. And we'll promote this one up to the HDA when we get to that step. All right, so I'm going to jump inside and we'll say set resolution resolution from SOP and then we'll also hit the set planes from SOP. Now what this does is it retrieves all those planes. All right. And those planes are these volumes. All right. So color, alpha and gradient. These are those planes that the SOP import node is referring to. And once we do that, once we hit this button right here, you can see that we have two options of displaying it. So we have this little button down here. All right. We can view the alpha, we can view the gradient or the color. And we can also come up here and say, a or G for the gradient, all right, or C for color. So those are our planes that we have. Cool. At this point, we can edit this just like any other image. Okay. So uh, let's do a little bit of editing here uh, because at this point, you know, this thing is pretty much ready to go. We could export this as a texture um, and import it into our game engine, whether it's Unity or Unreal. It works in both. All right, because it just becomes a, a Targa or a PNG at the end of the day. Okay, so a uh, couple things we can do. Let's say um, we want to make like a, a noise. Let's put a little bit of noise over this or something like that. All right, and what I'm going to do is just turn off noise per component. And uh, what I want to do is I want to get the size here from our SOP import node and put that into the image. Now, these individual nodes allow us to change re the resolution of the nodes themselves. All right. And this allows us to composite together different swatches of texture, if you will, or color. <laughs> okay. And so, um, let's go and create a color. So we'll do a color node. All right. And again, we'll just paste that size in there like so. 
And what I want to do is basically multiply this over the color. So let's just make like a green and then let's do a multiply and we'll multiply these two guys together like so. So now we have like a noise that we can then multiply over this. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to our noise and maybe we'll change the type of noise to like a sparse convolution. And let's turn up the roughness so we get lots of spots and stuff. And maybe the turbulence too. That's more or less what I'm looking for right there. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so let's just go and mess around with this. So maybe we make this a little bit more of like a yellow color there. And then let's composite these two guys together. We can also blend them, but I'm going to use a, a composite node. So let's do composite. And that's our foreground. There's our background. And there we go. So now we can basically multiply those over each other. So we have a bunch of different blending modes. Subtract. Um, multiply. There we go. And the cool thing about this is we can also change that foreground weight or the background weight. All right. All right. And we can also basically mask that off so we can just get something really subtle. Cool. Yeah. Makes it feel a little bit more realistic ish, you know, you know, there's a lot you can do here. It's, it's kind of like substance designer, but uh, it's really intended for compositing um, images, you know, for an effect. But you can start to work with it a lot like uh, Substance Designer. All right, so now we have our texture all ready to go. So how do we actually get this into a final texture, like a TGA or something like that? So let's say I'm happy with my grass there. And what I want to do is I want to uh, just drop down a... ROP node. So ROP file output. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to hook this in. Okay. And what we can do is we can go and hit render and it'll render out a texture, but we got to set up a few things first. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is just render the current frame because I only need one of these particular textures and I want to pick a place uh, where this should go. So I have a unity project I've already created. And so I'm going to put that there. So I'm going to go to my home folder, which is the documents folder. All right. And I'm going to go into my indie pixel folder and into the project. And inside of here, I'm going to go into the art folder and textures. And I'm just going to create a new folder called grasses. Like so. And inside of here, I will call this basic grass. 001.tga. And it's also a good idea to put some sort of suffix on this, so like D for diffuse, all right, just to indicate that this is the diffuse texture. All right, so with that, you can see that now we have the ability, okay, to actually pick our plane. So our color plane is on C and our alpha plane is on A, right? And that's, you know, actually perfect for us, but we could go in here, we could actually set it to G. And that would be our alpha, right? But in this case, I definitely do want to have the alpha. Uh, one other thing I also want to be able to do is I want to actually extend the border edges a little bit on this. So let's do a dilate a road node here. All right. And what this allows me to do is it allows me to basically increase the border size. So you can see I'm increasing that border size there. There's the original. It will shrunk down. There's the new one. All right, so you can make that, you know, something like 20. Not a really, you know, kind of extend the edges there, which is great. Um, and I only wanted to do that on uh, the C, not the A. Okay. So what we'll do is for now, we'll just uh, plug this in like so and leave that like that. And so basically, to get the alpha, the original alpha, back because this is the new one but you can see that our alpha has also been uh, dilated so the borders have been extended so what we want to do is drop down a channel copy so i'm going to get a channel copy node and pump that in to the first input and then i'm going to take the original texture there that has the original alpha in it and what i want to do is i want to 
set my target A to input 2A. So that's input 2 right there. This is input 1. And what that'll do is it'll actually pull in the original alpha. So it allows me to basically pack that uh, specifically or in a custom way. So there you go. So now we have original alpha and we have the uh, border extended diffuse. Perfect. Cool. So let's go and pump that into my ROP comp node there. And I think everything is ready to go. So all I have to do now is hit the uh, render button. And what will happen is Houdini will go and render that out for me. And it went, you know, relatively fast. So if I were to go and take a look at this here, if I go to my documents folder, uh, indie pixel, and go into that art folder that we had, you can see I have my basic grass 001 underscore D. All right, so let's actually take a look at that inside of Unity. All right, so here we are inside of our Unity project. And so I'm going to go to that folder, and there's our texture. So we got our alpha, and we have our diffuse. And so we're getting a, kind of a you know rough edge around there. And that's just the way Unity is actually displaying it. If we actually look at it back inside of Houdini over here, uh, it looks like this. So I went and added some edge blur to the, uh, the size just to make it you know feel a little bit more fuzzy. And so, you know, it's showing up appropriate. It's kind of chunky there. Um, we can go and change, you know, the soft edge mat here. See what that does. Kind of cleans it up for us a bit. We'll clean that up too. And then just re-export it. And every single time you go and, you know, re-export it, it's going to update inside of Unity now. There we go. Got that nice and clean now. Cool looks great so now we've got you know grass blades well basic it's it's starting to you know demonstrate the pipeline for generating these things and the cool thing about this let's go back up and uh, let's say that you know uh, we change some values around you know inside of our grass blades or we change you know the amount of columns that we have let's say we do three now What's going to happen is we're going to get a whole new set. Right now we have two. Let's put this up to six. So now what we're doing is we're developing a pipeline for quickly generating grass blades. All right. And so let's put this back to five. Looks great so far. And what we're going to do, you know, by the end of this entire uh, series is we're going to basically generate. Uh, an HDA that basically just allows us to control this whole system from this w one single node right here. All right. So we can drag and drop that in. And so if you're ever starting a new project and you need a bunch of foliage textures, this is a great way to go about it. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys there in this lecture. Uh, in the next, what we're going to do is focus on creating the grass clumps. Thanks so much.